We're live on the Instagram and I'm going to make a quick little video with you here talking about the three pros and the three cons of cooked food. There are three things, there are three things I really like about cooked food that raw food can't touch. And there are three things I don't like about cooked food and I wish they weren't the case but they just are. At least the way I eat. So these three pros and three cons of cooked food they relate to the way I eat cooked food. Not cooked food in general, but the way I eat cooked food. And, and this, keep that in mind. Next time you hear someone talking about like the pros and cons of veganism or, or anything in life, just realize that that's the way they're seeing it. That's the way they're experiencing it. So, without further ado, the three pros and cons of cooked food. Should we go for the pros or should we go for the cons first? You let me know. Post in the comments. Should we talk about the pros of cooked food or the cons of cooked food first? Should we start doom and gloom or should we finish doom and gloom? Because if I start with the pros, you're going to be like, oh yeah, cooked food's the best. And if I finish with the cons, you're going to be like, oh man, cooked food actually sucks. Up to you. Maybe I could alternate. Go back and forth. We're going to alternation. It's 50-50 here in the comments. Half are saying pros, half are saying cons. How about I go one at a time? I go back and forth, okay? Let's do that. That way it's fair. Whatever. Let's start with this matter. Flip a coin. Boom, 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 bam. Start with the cons. Okay, just landed there. The con of cooked food, the first con, is that it's slower to digest. It's just slower to digest. You can't refute that. Uh, and I eat clean. I eat like the fastest to digest cooked food. I eat the best cooked food. And it's still slow to digest. When compared to fruit. I'm comparing this to a fruitarian, raw vegan diet. But it's slower to digest. And because it's slower to digest, you feel heavier. Because you have more food in you. You're not pissing it out as quickly. Like when you eat a big dragon fruit, you pee it out, like you pee most of it out like an hour later, and the rest of it you poop out like six hours later. It's, it's gone in six hours. There's no trace of dragon fruit in you when you eat it. It's just super clean, in and out, done. But cooked food, man, it's like sludge. It's moves through you so slowly. So you feel heavier. And when you eat the cooked food, you can't have a watermelon afterwards because you're letting that food digest. So you got to time it really, really well. You got to time your meals properly. So you got to eat all the fruit first and then have your cooked food after. So that's the first con, cooked food. Just digest slower. We'll talk about another con that's similar to that in, in a sec. But that's the first one. It's a big one. Would you agree or disagree? If, anytime I say something here, when I mention the pro or when I mention the con, just type agree or type disagree in the comments there. So I know you're paying attention and I know... We're either on the same page or we're off the same page. That way I can clarify things if necessary. But like I said, it's the first con. It's just slower to digest. You can't can't race fucking buckwheat and quinoa against dragon fruit. The dragon fruit's gonna kill it every time. It's just poof. This is the first one. Now, the first pro of cooked food is that it's it's really convenient. It's so convenient. Not that it's everywhere, like I, I don't eat everywhere i don't go to restaurants and i don't freaking eat it out it's convenient in that i can stock up on it i can just buy it i can spend 300 bucks on enough buckwheat and quinoa to last me most of the year and most of my calories are are in the cupboards it i'm set it's so convenient when i do go grocery shopping now i shop for the raw foods i'll get some red peppers i'll get some mushrooms i'll get some cilantro some lettuce some spinach right all the all the raw foods but it's really convenient because i can stock up on all the calories i go buy it once and boom i got it locked up right true or not true agree or disagree cooked food is very convenient you just buy a bunch of it and you store it away and it's always there it's always there with raw food it's like one day it's good one day it's not good um it's 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 you gotta you gotta go buy a lot of it and it's hit and miss and yeah it's just not super convenient plus i mean try traveling on on raw it's definitely a bit more difficult uh, not knowing where to source up the quality stuff. So that's definitely a pro with the cooked food. It's just super, super convenient. Now, the second, I am, we're going back and forth here between pros and cons of cooked food. The first con of cooked food is that it's slow to digest. The first pro of cooked food is that it's really convenient. So it's like, who cares if it's slow to digest? At least I can get it, right? At least I, can, I know I can get it almost anywhere. Now, back to the cons. Because it's slower to digest... You're also spending more time digesting. When you're spending time digesting, you're more tired. You're just more fatigued, ever so slightly, you're more fatigued. 
I go to bed at night and I sleep. I need at least an extra hour of sleep every night now. I used to get by easy eight, nine hours of sleep. Now I need 10 hours of sleep. Like all my, I'm going to bed like eight at night. I can still wake up at six in the morning easily. And maybe this has to do with me being an athlete or whatever, but I was an athlete before as well. And I just, I was, I didn't need to sleep as much. So I definitely need to sleep more on cooked food. And my sister and I used to eat raw at the exact same time. One summer, we were both raw. We were going to bed at like 9 p.m. In the, at my cabin in the summer. And uh, she'd just gone raw. She was all excited. She was eating fully raw. And we are going to bed at like 8 or 9 at night. And we're waking up at like 6 a.m. every morning together. My sister and I wake up at the same time every morning. Then after two weeks on raw, she's like, screw this. I'm going back to cooked food. She started eating cooked food. Instead of waking up at 6 a.m. with me, I get up at 6 a.m. Where's my sister? Oh, she's still sleeping. For another two hours. I was like, dude, you're sleeping for extra two hours. You realize that, right? She's like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, how is the food worth you sleeping an extra two hours? But, you know, like I said, there's pros and cons to it. So let's get back to it. Uh, that's a, definitely a con. I spend more of my life now sleeping. Although I have improved my productivity habits while awake, but still, it's definitely a con of cooked food. Agree or disagree? You spend more time sleeping. I don't know if you've ever done raw. But if you're, if you're eating cooked food every day and you do one day raw, you're going to wake up. One morning, you'd be like, wow, I feel great on seven, eight hours sleep. Because you're not spending all that time digesting. It's just, it's out of you on raw. Cooked, you got to digest it. It takes time. The blood is in your stomach. More sleepy, for sure. And I avoid cooked carbs. Like, if I eat cooked carbs, oh, I don't know if you guys know this, but if I eat cooked corn or cooked yam or cooked sweet potato, I don't do gluten. But if I eat those cooked carbs, boom, my energy tanks. Like, wild rice. I was like, I'm not going to do white rice. I tried some wild rice the other day. My energy just tanks after I'm so tired. But the reason I'm able to make these videos and be as energetic as I am now is because I'm not doing carbs. I'm cooking quinoa and buckwheat, which is a lot higher in protein. So when I say carbs, I mean something that's like 90 plus percent carbs. Uh, but quinoa and buckwheat is like 70% or something. So yeah, that uh, is that. Okay, uh, what's this comment here saying? Don't think I can comment on that only time I did raw was at Woodstock and I slept a little due to excitement I felt. Yeah. Bella, that's what's up. Uh, Woodstock, I need very little sleep. It's like I'm so fueled by everyone's energy for sure. You can get by on like six hours sleep there. Uh, but the raw obviously helps too. So that's the uh, second con of cooked food. Now let's talk about the second pro of cooked food. Because again, they've, they've got pros, they've got cons, these, these cooked foods. The second pro is that it's consistent. Like it's, it's always, my meals are, my, my meals always taste the same. It's like a seven out of 10, seven and a half out of 10 every time. Sure. You don't he reach those highs of, with raw food. Like a tomato makes you drop on your knees and cry. You're like, oh my God, it's the best fruit ever. Durian just like blows your mind. It's like 10 out of 10 durian. You don't get that with cooked food. Cooked food, like it's the way I make it at least, it's like always seven and a half. It's always excellent. It's always, it's always, it's always, it's always great. But it's never like mind boggling. Like I'm going to cry. It's so fucking good. But it's consistently like a seven and a half. I cook up some quinoa, cook up some buckwheat, put a little bit of salt on there, done. So easy. Throw some spinach on there, throw some lettuce on there, some red peppers, some raw foods on there, get some freshness happening, cilantro. Uh, it's always good. It's always consistent. But with raw food, it's not consistent. It's like sometimes the oranges are great, sometimes it's, they suck, sometimes they're sour, sometimes the watermelon's horrible. Like I said, it's hard to get, it's not really convenient, but cooked food, it's like it's convenient and it's consistent. The quinoa is going to taste the same whether it's from this batch or that batch. Like it's, you just cook it up. It, it's very consistent. It's amazing. So that's the second pro of cooked food. It's like really reliable. You just buy a bunch of it, stock up, and it's, you know what you're going to get for the next year. Uh, so Fueled by Carbos is saying, even eating healthy cooked food, I'm always feeling tired, more tired than when eating raw. Yeah, I mean, if you're eating cooked carbs, you're going to be super, super tired. Like, and I say, it's, your username was fueled by carbos. Cooked carbs make you so freaking tired, man. Like I said, I focus on quinoa and buckwheat because that actually gives me... I couldn't do this live if I had just eaten a bunch of carbs. I'd be sleeping right now. So, yeah, anyways, that's the uh, second pro of cooked food. Now back to the con. This is going to be the third con of cooked food. There's so much more cleanup. And maybe this is an issue for you if you have a maid... But there's so much more cleanup. You have to cook the pot. You have to cook the bowl. You got to cook the... I mean, not cook. You got to clean the pot. You got to clean the stove if you use a stove. You got to clean the bowl. You got to clean the uh, cutlery. 
And the problem is, like ideally you'd clean it right away so it's super easy. But with cooked food, because it's warm, you kind of want to eat it when it's still warm. And so instead of cleaning it right away, maybe you let it soak or something, and then you go eat the cooked food. But then after you eat the cooked food, you're kind of tired. Like I said, it's slow to digest. So then you don't want to get up and, do, and go clean it. So you clean it later. Then you wait later, and then it's a lot harder to fucking clean. And you get so much more to clean. With raw, oh my God, I make a smoothie. Rinse out the blender, done. I, may, I cut up some papayas, put them in a bowl. The bowl is clean in like two seconds. I rinse it with some water. So raw is so much easier to clean up. There's no... There's no cleanup. And then prep. Oh, my God. I spend more time prepping the cooked food than I do with the, the, the raw. The raw, I just grab and go. The raw, there's no prep. Some people prep. Some people make fancy dishes and stuff. But I don't even prep. I just grab it and go. Grab a banana, grab an apple, grab a watermelon, grab a peach, plum, nectarine, durian. Like, I just eat it. Done. There's no prep. Cooked, I got to prep. I got to I gotta measure the water. I got to set the temperature. I got to let it cool down. I got to chop up all these things and put them in there. It's like, oh, my God. It's, it's an event. And the cleanup, man, I'm like, I gotta go clean still. Like, shit, just spend way more time prepping the cooked food and cleaning up. With raw food, it's just grab and go, done. So you definitely spend more time with cooked food, for sure. Spend more time prep, more time cleanup, and more time digesting it, okay? We just got a peace, love, seasonal fruit happening in here. What's going on, Vita Simples? All right, uh, so back to one of the pros. This is the third one, the third and final pro of cooked food, is that because it's consistently good, right? you, you want to buy a bunch of it and stock up. At least that's what I do. And I, I don't go to the store and buy little bags of quinoa, little bags of rice like some people do. That's just mind-blowing. Blowing. Mind blowing. Why would you do that? Quinoa, when you buy it at the store, it's like $7 a pound. When I buy it online, it's like 2 bucks a pound. So I buy organic, organic primo quinoa buckwheat online. I'm paying like 2 bucks a pound, and it lasts me forever. So it's so freaking cheap. Like one pound of quinoa has like 1,400 calories, and a pound of bananas, which is like one of the most densest fruits you can get, carbohydrate at least, it's like 400 calories per pound. And a banana per pound is like... You know, a uh, buck a pound, dollar a pound. Quinoa per pound, two bucks a pound, but you're getting like three times as many calories. And bananas are like the cheapest fruit. That's not to mention all the other fruits, like the grapes and the peaches and the plums and the nectarines and the red peppers. It's like five bucks each for a red pepper here, especially organic. So it's cooked food's way cheaper. It's way cheaper. So it's a huge pro for a lot of people out there. Um, plus, I guess another con is that on, on cooked is that you. Like you gotta you gotta drink more water because you're you're more thirsty because the food's like less water rich, and I and I don't even bake I don't even I don't bake my food I don't put it in the oven I boil everything so I infuse all my cooked food with water. I'm not baking like some people like when you if you bake food oh my god like uh, Laura Loon is watching right now I think she sent me a video the other day of like cooking um, quinoa bread I mean that looks great, but I don't really bake I boil all my stuff. If I were to bake it I'd be so thirsty. Bella is saying she drinks a gallon a day. Maybe because she's yeah I'm eating eating some cooked food. I didn't drink much water on raw food. I made a whole video about not drinking water. I, mean, I drank coconut water when I was drinking coconut water, but I don't need to drink water. You're not thirsty after a watermelon, uh, but you're thirsty after after uh, after cooked. But if I'm yeah if I, if I'm Boiling my food, I'm not as thirsty as people who are baking and dehydrating their foods and grilling their food and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's just something to keep in mind. Those are the three pros and cons. If you want me to recap them, I'll recap them right now. I'll start with the three cons of cooked food, then we'll finish on a positive note. The three cons of cooked food, again, are it's slower to digest. So... A lot of issues there, it being slower to digest. It's in your system longer, you feel heavier, that sort of thing. And you can't eat raw food afterwards because it's stuck in there. So it's slower to digest. It makes you more tired, you're more fatigued. You spend more time sleeping because you're, it's slower to digest. And the cleanup is, is crazy. The prep and the cleanup is, is way more prep and cleanup than raw food. So there are three, three cons right there. And two of them are just time wasters. The three pros, though, is that it's convenient as hell, super, super convenient. It's consistently good, and it's cheap, really, really cheap. 
So those are just my insights. Jennifer is saying, answer my DM. Answer, I, Jen, I think I just replied to your email. I'll have to check your DM. I'll check the DM, but um, yeah. Anyways, this is the first time I ever made a video talking about these three pros and cons. I've wanted to make videos about this in the past, but I never liked how it turned out. So I just went live. And uh, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, James. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, whoever else is here watching live. Laura Loon. Etc. Etc. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to go uh, get some work done on the Plant Based Revolution Summit. Oh my God, that summit's been so fun. So fun. When you spend as much time as I have with these plant-based internet entrepreneurs you learn so much it's like you, you become who you hang around you really do become who you hang around and the plant-based revolution summit i've got 12 of the top paid plant-based entrepreneurs teaching you how they start their online business and uh and how you can start yours as well you can get all the information at pbrsummit.com or go to the link in my bio we got people like john venus on there talking about how he blew up his instagram how he makes a full-time income from instagram got melissa raymondi talking about how she makes a full-time income selling ebooks got doc, dr doug graham talking about how he makes a full-time income uh, with his book and doing speaking tours and retreats and things like that uh we got uh, Adele from Miami Fruit talking about how she runs Miami Fruit and how other people can start their own fruit shipping business. How cool is that? We got so many cool people on there teaching exactly what they do and how you can do it too. It's amazing. Like I said, you become like the people you hang around. Like the more I talk to these people, the more interviews I do with these people. Like Dr. Rick and Karen Dina revealed to me their whole plan on how they sell $5,000 coaching programs. And I'm like, you guys just showed me everything. You do realize that, right? And not just me showed everything, they showed you guys everything too. I recorded the whole thing. I asked them the hard questions. I'm like, how much money like, are you guys actually making? How do you actually enter that phone call? What's the procedure like when you get on the call with someone and try and sell them a $5,000 raw food education program? They told me everything. It's insane. John Venus tells me exactly what he puts in his DMs. Uh, Adele tells me what she says when she goes live to make sure people buy and follow. It's a really sick summit, man. If you want to blow up your Instagram, if you want to grow your YouTube channel, if you want to make money online as a plant-based internet entrepreneur plant-based revolution summit is definitely the place these it's been tough for me to get a hold of these entrepreneurs man they're busy they're all busy if you have any suggestions for me reaching out to any other plant-based entrepreneurs you want me to interview let me know i'll do my best but uh they're hard to get a hold of and i managed to get a hold of 11 really awesome ones and uh got them to spill the beans on how they run their business and how they suggest others do it too so uh laura loon saying how do you create an ebook. I have the content. What's next? Laura Loon, check the interview I did with Melissa today. We uploaded that. We answered that exact question today. Exactly how to create and sell an ebook and how to blow up your Instagram at the same time. So you can create the ebook, but is it really going to sell? It's only going to sell if you have the audience. So we talk about that, how to build the audience that's actually going to want to buy your ebook. We talked about that in the interview. Completely free. Go to pbrsummit.com. All these interviews, so, so sick. You get one interview per day. Don't want to overwhelm you with too many interviews. So you get one per day and uh, take notes and uh, soak it up. Soak it up. Soak it up. My whole mind has changed. Like the way I do business already has changed. And I've only conducted like six of these interviews. So I still have six interviews to go. And I'm already changing the way I do business because of the six interviews I just uh, just did with people. It's like I'm learning so much. They're like coaching sessions. I'm like letting you in on my coaching sessions. It's bas- that's basically what they are. Maybe these aren't interviews. Maybe that's not a great way to, to, to word it. Maybe I shouldn't say these are interviews. These are like, this is like top paid plant-based internet entrepreneurs coaching me on how I can do what they're doing. PBRsummit.com. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. I will pin that. Pin comment. Cool. PBRsummit.com. Exactly. Yeah, like, it's just like, do you, would you like to listen in? So... If I were to get, if I, if I, here's answering this, yes or no. If I were to collect the 11 top paid in vegan plant-based internet entrepreneurs, if I were to collect all 11 of them and get a coaching session with each of them, where I ask them the hard questions, where I get mentored by them, would you want to sit in and listen in on that coaching session where we bounce ideas back and forth of each other? They gave me like their best tips and tricks as if I'm paying them the top dollars. Uh, and then, and they reveal to me exactly a step-by-step 30 day plan. They say, Hey, what to do on day one, all the way to day 30 to go from no followers to having a large enough following 
so that you can run a successful online business. You can have a large enough following to sell your ebooks, sell your courses, sell your coaching programs. And how to do it all without being salesy about it. Like just being yourself, just being cool. Would you like to learn that? Would you like to sit in on those sessions? Imagine if you could just get like one gem from each of those interviews. Like you could just get one gem from, from, a, from an hour session like that. Like, oh my God. Well, I can tell you and you watch. And these interviews are free, by the way. But I can tell you, if you watch these interviews, you were going to have insight after insight after insight after insight. Ideas like during the interview, whenever someone blows my mind, I'm just like, when you see how many times I do that, I'm just like, wow, wow, wow. Like I didn't know that. And I, I've been a vegan online. Uh, I've been a vegan for over 10 years, but I've been doing online business now full time for the past like six years. And I'm still learning a ton. Kyle's my best friend. You guys did an awesome collab. Love what you're doing, man. Awesome, bro. Doc Farhan, what's going on? Kyle was part of the summit as well. Kyle is the shit, man. Kyle revealed exactly how he gets all of his photography clients, how he does full-time freelance photography, um, and how he really has turned that into a course online teaching other people how they can do full-time photography. So he's a freelancer getting full-time freelance gigs and then turns around and teaches people how to build a course. Or Sorry, then he turned around and built a course teaching other people how to do freelance photography. And we share it all for free at the summit. Like, holy smokes. Holy, so, so cool. Uh, Doc's saying he is helping us as well with our business. What's your business, Doc? Super spiritual and pure consciousness. What's your business? Yeah, so this, is, uh, this, is, has, been, this has been an amazing summit so far. And I've only done six of the interviews so far. But you sign up now today. You get one every single day for free. Uh, the next few interviews are going to be super sick. Chris Cannell is going to be talking about... The raw advantage is going to be talking about how he does his retreats. So if you want to do retreats in the future, you'll learn how to do that. I'm going to be telling you about webinars, how to create a perfect webinar, how to get people to the webinar, how to conduct the whole thing, and then how to uh, how to sell it at the end. So you can be making seven grand a month from that if you're just starting out. I can walk you through the whole 30-day process as well. Day one to day 30, what exactly to do. And uh, there's some... Here's the thing about your day. Like you're probably like right now you're watching this me on live. That's great. But you're probably spending time during the day right now watching stuff that's not related to your goals. And that's not how you accomplish your goals. You got to spend every waking minute thinking about your goal. Like people invite you out to go do something. Sorry, I can't do it. Why? Working on my goals. And family invites you out to go do this. Sorry, I can't come fam. Why? I'm working on my goals. Like you just, every second, every day needs to be spent on your goals. And when you do that, that's when you become successful. It's like you just need tunnel vision. You need that focus. You need to, the outside world cannot exist. It needs to be just this. You and your goals. Uh, Doc saying, I have a YouTube channel called Doc Fire and PhD. Dope. Cool, cool, cool. What, what's the YouTube channel about? I want to host a retreat one day for sure. Jennifer, you're going to learn how to do exactly that with Chris Kendall uh, on the PBR Summit. It's super fun. Chris has done lots of retreats. Um, Kyle said so many amazing things about you. Man, I got a lot of amazing things to say about Kyle. That guy's dope. Oh, you're the testosterone guy. You're that, are you the testosterone funnel guy? Do you, do, you, do, you, um, do you have funnels talking about testosterone, how to raise test? By the way, if you guys are interested in turning your passion for health, for veganism into a full-time income, pbrsummit.com right now all the interviews for free for a limited time head over there and sign up and uh get on board man start educating yourself on how this is done doc says i'm motivating people lots of neuroscience no dope 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 very cool that's me cool bro we'll have to uh check you out give you a follow i love when kyle told me about you i was like there's another example of someone who's very crystal clear on what he can help people with he's clear on who he can help and what do you help them with? By the way, do you do you help women or just guys? Do you help women with testosterone or just guys? Who's your perfect customer? That's really important. I've noticed there are three things that all of these top plant-based internet entrepreneurs have in common. Do you want to know what these top three things they all have in common are? Let me know if you want to know. What... I've so I've interviewed six of these plant-based internet entrepreneurs so far. It's got another six to go, but so far the six have had three things in common. 
I'm trying to find the common denominator. I'm like, if there was just a few things that people could really focus on, what would they be? What would those things be to be very successful? Highly successful. If you want to become a highly successful internet entrepreneur, what are the three things that all the people in the vegan niche, at least, have in common? Guess what they are. If you want to know what these three things are, type a three in the comments. Again, these are the three things that all of these internet plant-based entrepreneurs have in common. What are the three common denominators, the three common factors? I'll give you a hint. They're not all super pretty. They're not all super fit. They're not all super fortunate to live in Canada. Okay, Marion says three he wants to know. Gordon wants to know. Uh, Jennifer's already taking guesses. Consistency, courage, and drive. Uh, yeah, those are qualities that I'm sure they have. But what are the three things that they're doing? Okay, what are the three action action steps that they got to do? Because sure, consistency, you develop courage, you develop drive, you develop over time the character traits. But it's like, what are the three things they're just doing all the time? Number one thing they're doing, they're putting out content. They're putting out content. Every person I've spoken to so far on the interview. Uh, during the summit has said put out three pieces of content on Instagram every day if you're not putting out three pieces of content every day on Instagram what the fuck are you doing you're trying to blow up your Instagram and you're not putting out three pieces of content you're trying to blow up your Instagram and you're not putting out at least seven stories a day put out minimum seven stories a day minimum three pieces of content on as posts and hashtag 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 30 hashtags I saw I see Josh in the comments I think Josh um, has been posting a lot more lately it's been freaking awesome um, I'm not sure if he's using 30 hashtags or not, but he ought to be. The 3x the um, visibility. So that's the first thing. Just putting out content. They're always putting out content on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, on email, whatever. They're just present. Okay, that's the first thing. Adele said, yeah, Adele, uh, Melissa Raimondi, John Venus, they're all saying post, post, post. Three a day, minimum. Seven stories a day, minimum. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing, they're all crystal clear. And they've taken the time to get this clarity, but they've, they've, they've gotten crystal clear and they keep putting it out there. They're crystal clear on what they can help people with. They know exactly what they can help people with. They're very, very results focused. They know exactly what kind of result they're going to get people. John Venus is going to help you build muscle, get leaner. Melissa Raimondi is going to help you lose weight with her, with her raw food meal plan, meal prep. Like They're just very, very specific. Jamie from Daily Green Boost, he's going to help you overcome deficiencies. They're all so specific on what result they can help people with. They're not just some wandering like, oh, here I am, I'm in the forest, oh, here I am, I'm eating fruit. Like it's, what can you help people with? They're very, very specific. Okay, that's the second thing they all had in common. Try and guess the third thing they all have in common. Take a guess. What are they doing? Again, what are they doing? So they're, they're consistently putting out content, and they're consist- in that content, they're focusing on the result. What are they going to help you get? I'm looking at my notes. I took notes on this shit, man. Josh is at 25 hashtags. We need 30. Come on, take some guesses. I wrote it down, man. I wrote down all three things they had in common. But now I can't I can't I can't read my chicken scratch. It's too messy. Hmm. Well, I'll just, I'll just say it from memory. I just think, what do these three people have in common? He said their output is a dramatically higher than anyone else I speak with. Their output is three posts a day. Minimum on Instagram, YouTube. Vid a day, vid every other day, three vids a week. Very consistent with the YouTube uploads as well. And again, they're focused on the result. What are they getting people? Okay. The third thing that they all have in common What's the third thing they all have in common? What's something that they do? I'll 
say it right here. You ready? And this, this, this might not be even a, a necessary ingredient. Maybe nothing I've said so far has been a necessary ingredient, but this is just what they do. And I'm sure if you do what they do, you're going to get what they get. The other thing they do is they interact. They interact with the customers. They interact with their students. They reply to comments. They reply to emails. They reply to DMs. They reply to messages. They, they interact with the students. They create relationships. They, they're actively engaged. There's activity going on. They're actively like focused on the business. And it's like, it's like people, oh, I want a work-life balance. It's like, yo, man, it's like balance is different for everyone. If you love what you do so much, which they all do, that's another thing that will come. They all love what they do. If you love what you do so much, why would you want balance to be you not doing what you love? Just spend time doing what you love. And that, that could be like 80% of your waking hour on work and the other 20% not on work. The other 20%, 10% being eating and 10% being working out, doing fitness. The rest of 80% is on work. When you're not working, you're eating or you're working out, doing fitness. Uh, Doc is saying, let me know if you have any time. I'll send a DM. I'd love to do a Zoom interview with you, bro. Let's do a Zoom interview. Sounds good, man. I'm always up for an interview. I appreciate, appreciate the... Uh, the invite there, that's dope. Always up for it, man. Cool. So those are the uh, those are the three things. They're not retreating. They're like aggressively putting output. And Jamie specifically says, like, I'm not aggressively working on daily green boost. Yeah, but he's he's aggressively thinking about he's aggressively thinking about how he can make daily green boost better, how he can make the company better, how he can run it smoother. How he can uh, make his lifestyle freedom so much more chill. Like, dude has such an amazing lifestyle. We talked about his day in life. That's the thing with all these entrepreneurs. I ask them about their day in life. Everyone's day in life is completely different. So everyone has different routines, different habits. Like, I can't pin down a, a single um, a, a template of the ultimate day in life because everyone has a different day in life. That's for sure. I thought maybe, oh, maybe they're all waking up and doing this, or maybe they're all doing that. Everyone has a different day in life. That's for sure. But like I said, the three things that are consistent is. They're uploading content. They're very consistent with the output. They're very focused on the result they can help people get. And so people associate them with that result. And they, uh, what was the third one? Anyone remember the third one? Something about they love what they do so much. And they're engaged. They're actively engaged with the customers, with the clients, with their students. They have communication back and forth. Like they're present online. They have an online presence, like active. Like they're online. Kyle, I always online, dude. Every time I come on Instagram, that guy's online. Melissa, always online. Like they live, eat, breathe, live this stuff. This is their life. They're not out. They're not out in the woods, like doing nothing for most of the time. Sure, every now and then they go out for big hikes and stuff for sure, but. Most of them, they're, they're online, they're working on their business. So anyways, that's it for now. This conversation has um, gone way over the topic. The topic is supposed to be the three pros and cons of cooked food. And I switched gears and started talking about the Plant-Based Revolution Summit, which is super epic. And if you want all the interviews for free for a limited time, click the... Uh, actually, there's nothing to click. you got to go to pbrsummit.com. That's it, pbrsummit.com. Get all the interviews for free. Hopefully... You get there on time and you check out the interviews. You're going to get one per day. And they've all been amazing so far. So go check it out if you want to learn how to start an online vegan business, making a full-time income, doing what you love with Instagram, with YouTube, with TikTok, with being yourself, with getting paid to be yourself, getting paid to help people. That's what it's all about. All right. Peace.